Hello. My name is Amy. This is Vien. We're going to talk about ghost buses. Um, if you've been coming to Chai Hack Night for the last couple months, you probably know that we're not typically the people who stand up here and talk about ghost buses. So just quickly up top, uh, Lori Merrill, who created this project and is probably watching at home. Hello, Lori. Uh, couldn't be here tonight. So we're going to be doing this on her behalf. Yeah, so uh, as Amy said, we're here representing the Ghost Buses group, of which there are several members here as well. And we want to start by laying out what's the problem? How did we get started um, with the Ghost Buses breakout group? This is how we got started. Throughout the pandemic, a lot of transit riders, um, ourselves included, have been noticing that the levels of service on the CTA trains and buses and transit have been seemingly less reliable. And sometimes what happens is you're looking at your phone where you might have a tracker of when the bus or train is about to come. And, you know, you're about to go to work, you're about to go to a medical appointment that you need to be at, and you think a train or a bus is going to come, and then it just doesn't come. Kind of curious, can we get a small show of hands? Has this affected folks in the room? Pretty much everyone, <laughs> pretty much everyone raised their hand. Yeah, yeah, it's a really pervasive problem and it's been like talked about a lot in the media as well, which I think was part of the inspiration. Yeah, um, there have been reporters who have talked about it on the mainstream news media channels. Um, Block Club has shared uh, stories about it, uh, it, just news outlets in general. And so we started seeing this issue um, and a lot of articles being published and um, one in particular was an article by Streets Blog by um, someone who is affiliated with another group, Commuters Take Action. And they published initially a report that only about 50% of the blue line um, trains were running. So we saw this and we were like, whoa, that's, um, we, like, we, we thought it was bad, but that's even worse than we had kind of expected. And so... Lori saw this, uh, who was the person who started the breakout group and announced it and asked if anybody would be interested in joining the group. And her day job is also in transit. So she works um, with the uh, data sets that are adjacent to the ones that we're using. So she started thinking about, OK, how can this possibly be applied to Chicago? Um, and then she pitched the group to uh, Chai Hack Night and said, is anybody interested in joining? And it turned out that there are so many people who are affected by the issue that folks started to say, hey, maybe this is something that I can work on and um, I could contribute to. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, pretty much every transit agency in the country, especially larger ones, make all of the data that they use publicly available. So all of the stops data, all of the routes data, and in many cases, the real time data for buses that are actually on routes. Um, so we knew that the CTA has uh, real time bus tracking available through their API. And we also knew that they publish um, a schedule that they claim to be accurate. So essentially what this project does is um, compares the real-time bus tracking data by pinging the API like every five minutes to check where the buses are on the map and then compares that to the schedule to notice discrepancies. And um, you know, this quote, every map of Chicago is the same map. Uh, one thing that we were sort of looking at when we started this project, you know, this city has a real history of, of discrepancies between neighborhoods in terms of like who's getting funding, who's getting opportunities, like whether or not services are being provided to the residents of those neighborhoods. Um, so we were very interested also to see whether or not this was another instance of that, whether or not, for example, the north side would have more bus service than the south side. <laughs> so what we did is we started to build a data architecture Taking in those two data sets, the data set of the actual um, buses that come in, also the scheduled data set, and we kind of built it from the ground up. We found uh, a, like a data storage uh, with Amazon Web Services, and I think it was S3, like simple storage, to put all the data inside. We were inspired by the CPS COVID dashboard that was done here at Chai Hack Night. So building on things that are already existing. And 
Um, eventually, what uh, what we've been doing is we started to produce some data and to answer this question of what are um, the disparities potentially in the ghost buses that are happening across the city? What's the prevalence? What's the distribution? One of our members, Dylan, took some of the data and created a visualization. And so here in the visualization, what you see is that the yellow routes are the ones that um, have a ratio of actual to scheduled trips near one. So this is like 0.92 to one, right? So that one would be that there are exactly as many actual trips as there are scheduled trips, whereas like a, a ratio of 0.5 would mean that there's only half the amount of actual trips to the scheduled trips, right? So half of the buses are ghosting people. And then as you go down into orange, pink, um, and then the darker purples, you see that those ratios actually go down. So the, the, the bottom is actually 0.24 um, to 0.71. And so basically, you know, what you can see visually by looking at this map is, yeah, the service does uh, gradually get worse as you go further south down the city. Okay, also when we started this project, one of the things that we were thinking based on thinking about past civic tech projects that be what we've been working on is that it's really important um, for us to understand what's the ecosystem, what's the ecology of the organizations that are already working on some of these issues before we come in. The worst thing would be to come in without any connection to people being affected, even though we, we do right transit. Um, so the, the worst thing would be coming in and not having any connection to the folks who are uh, like most directly affected by ghost buses. So we said, okay, what is the ecology? And what we started doing is over time, we started contacting different organizations that were involved in doing this work. So Communities Take Action right now is kind of at the forefront of doing political mobilizing. Um, they had a sticker campaign and uh, there's petitions that are kind of spread across different organizations that call for the mayor and for the CTA to take more action to um, alleviate the problem of ghost buses. And, you know, so there's them. There's also organizations like the Transit for All campaign that have longer term asks, like making a transit riders uh, union that's, you know, not just a couple months in the future, but is years um, kind of in the planning and in the making. And then we also connected to groups that are nationwide that do transit advocacy to understand, okay, so ghost buses, are, ghost buses are happening here, but actually they're happening all over the nation. It's a much deeper, much more widespread problem, partially because of the pandemic. And so we wanted to understand what is the context and what are other groups doing and um, how can we potentially learn from them um, to, to make the work that we're doing better. So for the actual technology that we're using, uh, separate from the data side, so uh, we're, uh, we're building the site mostly in React with Leaflet uh, for our mapping and SCSS for styling. Um, when it comes to like user experience on the site, there are a couple different things we wanted to consider. First of all, as most of you can tell by looking around at all of you who ride the CTA, most people probably have a couple bus lines that they're interested in knowing you know, like if I look up my bus line, how well is that bus line doing compared to the, the schedule that it's, you know, that they're publishing? Um, so we wanted to make sure that everyone could access like their buses schedule data. Um, but we also wanted to make it so that you could compare bus lines to one another and um, neighborhood groups to one another, because you might look at your bus and find that it's running like 80% of its scheduled trips and think that's really bad. <laughs> but then you might find out that that's like one of the best lines in the city and then it's like, well, what's happening there, you know? Um, one thing that we were really aware of is that it is a lot of data. The CTA has something like 127 bus lines. I should know that, I think, off the top of my head at this point. Um, it has a lot of bus lines. All of those bus lines run a lot of trips. Uh, and so we didn't want the experience to feel overwhelming. You know, We didn't want anyone to look on there and be like, well, this is way too much data. I'm not a data scientist. I'm just you know, someone who's trying to figure out how the bus is doing. So that was another thing we also wanted to keep 
uh, in touch. So some of these things we are currently working on, some of them we have completed, but things like color mapping. So the map that Dylan generated earlier, making it so that you can look at the city as a whole and get a really good visual for how buses are performing across the city. Um, like I said, filtering by neighborhood and ward, seeing how your neighborhood is affected by this problem as opposed to other neighborhoods across the city and um, comparing the most dependable and le least dependable routes. Um, Another thing that we're kind of making a, a big push for right now um, is web accessibility, which I actually want to thank Victor because he sent me a lot of really good resources and advice about this problem. But um, one thing that he pointed out that I wanted to pull out and talk about is just that a lot of our work has to do with like seeing all of these bus routes on the map, but maps are traditionally actually very difficult <laughs> when it comes to web accessibility. So figuring out other ways, and this might actually be news if you're in the ghost buses group, we are gonna talk about this today. <laughs> um, but figuring out other ways of visualizing that data outside of a map. So different riders with different access to the internet will also be able to read those. Uh, Decarb My State does a lot of really cool stuff with that, and we're gonna be stealing all of it. Um, <laughs> now, I actually think that we have like a demo. I, I actually think we do have a demo. I put it together. So, <laughs> so this is our home page. I'll just go ahead and refresh it because of the animation. Um, but I'm curious. So, anyone in the room who currently takes the bus, is there a bus either by route name? or route number that you would be interested in looking up. Okay, we have one right here in the green. 16, 60, 60, okay. So you can look these up by name and number right now. But if you look it up, you can kind of see, pull it up. This is all of the information about bus 60. So you can see all of this data right now is just based on weekday data. And the, I, because um, every single bus in the city with maybe one or two exceptions, runs on weekdays. So just for a starting point, we felt like that was a really good place to start to be able to compare all the bus lines. But our eventual goal is to also be to be able to compare uh, weekend and holiday data as well. Um, I will also note that generally what we're finding is that weekday trips are running more reliably than weekend trips. So just something to consider when you look at these numbers. Um, so this bus line, you can see services a little over 6,000 per, per week day. Um, it's, this is a little bit misworded. It's, it's performing better than 30% of the buses. So not one of our best and, <laughs> and one in every five buses is ghosting CTA riders. And then we also have the, the bus ranking as well, just out of all 127 bus lines, where does this bus fall? Um, this is a visual bug. So I'm just gonna keep making it of that. Um, anyone else? A bus line right here? Western. Western, okay. Western. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is actually doing a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> it's doing a little bit better. It definitely services more people. Um, falling in, oh, it's actually, I think maybe doing, I forget what the last one was, but you can see the same set of data just generated um, depending on which bus line you click. And I will say also, for example, my bus is the 22 bus. If you want to, you can also click directly on the map to get this information. And I can't, oh, there it is. So there you go. So you can also go through, click as well. Um, Long-term, our goals are, like I said, to add more filtering availability. So you'll be able to like, down here, like uh, filter by ward, uh, by the 10 best bus lines, by the 10 worst bus lines, and then also some other stuff that we are thinking about right now. So if you have ideas on the best way to filter buses or questions that you have that you would like represented on the map, uh, join our breakout group. Also, most immediately, so like when you see, oh my God, like my bus is in, um, you know, it's, it's performing like this, um, better than this percentage of buses or like two out of five of the buses on my road are ghosting people. Um, in terms of like connecting to the broader political effort, what we're trying to do is from that to ask people to contact their representatives. And um, that's why we have filtering by ward, I think, and, and by area, because then you can literally like email the person. Um, oh, great. <laughs> Just while you're talking yeah. about it, go in, ahead. in your ward, and to try to put more pressure on the CTA to get political action going, it says sign the petition. And actually, there was a petition, and it's almost fulfilled right now. Um, 
but that doesn't mean that more voices cannot make it um, stronger. And then that also spills over. So um, that's how like you can help based on the data that you see on the website. Uh, the website launch, we have loose plans to launch, if not next week, then the week after something again that we're going to be talking about today. If you want to come uh, to our Ghost Bus breakout meeting right after this, uh, new data and features. I mean, as we talked about, we have a lot of different ideas for things that we want to add to the map, uh, research that we want to add to the website. Um, and most importantly, everyone is welcome. So if you have any experience that you think could be helpful here, if you are a transit writer and you feel like, you know, you just want to go and vent, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great space for that. Um, and then also, if you are someone who is looking for long-term updates on this project, we are on Twitter at Ghost Buses, so uh, you can find us there. And I think that's all we have. That's it. So we can take maybe questions if anyone has any. Um, I have a question around how you're measuring how a bus is ghosting uh, or a bus is, is not reliable. Um, do you measure it at the start of the route or at the end of the route? Or how, how, where do you measure whether a bus was actually, you know, it, it didn't actually take that route? And second, um, how, how long are you waiting until, the, until you consider it a missed bus? You know, if the schedule says 810 and the bus is actually postponed until like 815, do you consider that a, a ghost bus? That is a great question. For Lori. Um, <laughs> actually, Dylan, do you know the answer to that? There we go. Um, less of, uh, like, I guess, looking at the individual um, buses is more or less um, looking, like, I guess, counting the number of um, distinct trips on a route that actually happened, and then just comparing that count to what the schedule said um, was going to be the total number of trips for that day on that particular route. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily tracking the specific vehicle um, at that time. But, um, Another thing to say is this is a really great question. Um, in this first iteration, when we were trying to say, okay, what is the what is the most direct number we can start to give people and that we can build right away that will give them a sense of the ghost buses phenomenon. And as Dylan said, like over a certain time window, how many of the buses are happening versus how many are scheduled. That's just a basic number. We have also like, we've also been talking about actually tracking a, a particular bus in its start and its end time. So um, then, then actually seeing when it like drops off. So that we are think those kinds of questions we are absolutely thinking about um, after we release and launch the website next week. And that would be like the second iteration of, okay, so now we understand at a high level how bad the problem is. Let's get a little bit deeper into it. Um, and we welcome, ex you know, um, volunteering expertise for anybody who's interested in exploring these sorts of um, questions with us. Great. Thank you.